Here we have the Anorak Model 500. This unit is designed for quick testing of smokestacks, any uh, emission sources, whether it's an engine, stationary engines, uh, you can use it, they use them at compressor stations, uh, boiler rooms, any large emission sources you can use this on. Okay, here we have our Anorak Model 500. The kit, kit consists of the unit, you'll have either a thermoelectric cooler, which is this item with the blue plastic cover, or a water trap. It has a probe. This is the standard probe. It's about nine inches long. Comes with a ten foot hose with the, the yellow wires for the thermocouple. There's the thermocouple built into the uh, built into the tip of the probe. Alright, the tip of the thermocouple is out here. In addition, you get a battery charger, extra filter. If you have the uh, thermoelectric cooler, you have an inline filter here. If you have the water trap, there's a fiber filter mounted inside the lower half of the water trap. You also get a four cell, four double A cell battery holder. In the event that you're in the field and you don't have power available to operate the unit on the rechargeable batteries, what you'll do is install four alkaline batteries into the holder and you can continue your testing. Plug it in, let the unit sit for about five minutes so that the sensors restabilize and then you can continue your testing. Now, Normally, if you purchase a unit with the cooler, the cooler will be mounted on the side. There are two plugs on the side. One is for the cooler, because this is a powered device, and then the other one is for the charge jack. Just be careful you don't inadvertently plug them into the wrong jack, otherwise you may damage this connector. On the other side, you've got a USB port, You've got a serial port. This is a standard 9-pin serial port. You can connect to any computer. And then you have the reset button. In the event you your batteries go dead, you recharge it. Sometimes the microprocessor won't turn on when you hit the on button. You may have to just hit the reset button. After you hit a reset button or if the batteries go dead and you recharge them, you'll have to reset your time and date. Just keep that in mind. Uh, one more thing, if you have a water trap instead of the cooler, the water trap has a dovetail mount on the side of the unit. And there's a corresponding dovetail cut into the aluminum piece here. And that just simply slides in, like so, mounts on the side, then you take your hose and you plug your hose into the bottom. And at that point you'll connect the rest of the hose and the thermocouple down here. Now what we'll do is we'll hook up the entire system. My recommendation is before you start testing, charge the unit overnight. Give it a full charge. Make sure that, that you're on a powered outlet. Make sure that the when you leave that, that unit is charging. Uh, there's a switch inside. If you turn the unit on and plug in the charger and you don't see an increase in the power of the unit, then the switch inside probably is in the off position. That's for uh, non-rechargeable batteries. That's so that you cannot accidentally overcharge alkaline batteries. Just You may have to open up the back, the small cover on the back, and flip that switch up. When we ship it from the factory, it comes with batteries, with rechargeable batteries installed. The switch is always in the on position. So if you happen to use alkalines in the field and flip that switch down, when you go back to the rechargeables, don't forget to flip that switch back to the on position. I always recommend turning the unit on first. As soon as you take it out of the case, turn it on. This way, it gives the sensors a chance to stabilize a little more. Then make your connections. You have the probe connection, the thermocouple, and the gas fitting. The thermocouple plugs in. It's keyed so you can't accidentally put it in the wrong way. You, have, you can only put it in one way. Then you have your gas connector. 
if you go to press the gas connector on and it won't go on, you may have to just pull the collar back and let it lock open again. And then you just press it on and the collar goes forward and it locks into place. Now your probe is connected. The other end, you'll just undo the hose. And then you have, you notice that the extension wire is much longer. That's because you want to reach from this point down to the temperature jack, which is on the side here. You have gas in and temperature jack. So this gets connected the same as the probe. And then your thermocouple jack will get plugged into the side where it says thermocouple. So you have gas in, thermocouple. Now the unit's ready to go. Also make sure this has been connected the whole time too when you first turn, take it out. Make sure that this is plugged in. That gives this an opportunity to cool off. Because the object here, you'll, you'll find that one side gets warm, the other side will get cool. And what that does is if there's any moisture coming through as a vapor, the uh, intent is to have the moisture condense on the inside of the aluminum block that's under here and then drop out the moisture and it'll collect in the bottom if there's a lot of moisture. Now at this point you're pretty much ready to go. You will hit the zero button and it'll say enter to zero or shift to abort. There's really no reason to, sh to, to abort at this point. If you're taking readings and you accidentally hit the zero button at that point, now you want to shift to abort because if you run the auto zero and there's any gas present in the system, it will create erroneous readings on your sensors. So you want to make sure that when you zero it, you're in a clean atmosphere, a clean office or outside. Take it out there, let the unit run, and then run your zero. You run the auto zero by pressing the zero and then enter, and you will see a countdown. It will count down from either 120 seconds or 180 seconds down to zero. At the end, it will zero all the sensors. Oxygen will read 20.8, 20.9. All the other sensors should read zero. The stack temperature should read what the ambient temperature is. So when you're finished, your stack temperature reading gives you gross stack temp, not net stack temp. It includes the ambient temperature in the reading, so keep that in mind. Now what you'll do is you can check by simply hitting the display data button and you toggle it through. You'll see on the second screen you've got your CO2 excess air, combustibles and draft. Next screen, these are your toxic sensors. The NOx is a total of the NO plus the NO2 and then you have the SO2. And the last screen it's just a compilation. It gives you all the readings on one screen that you might be interested in. It shows you your toxics, your stack temp, your combustibles, your draft, and your oxygen reading. And then you hit it again, it goes back to the beginning. Now, that button plus the status button have multiple uses. What you'll do is you can hit the status and toggle it several times. You get several different displays. First screen will give you your time and date this is the customer's name. Next screen gives you your software version, the serial number of the unit, this is your battery voltage, and tells you which fuel you've got set up in the machine. You have up to 15 fuels available to select from. The next screen is the ambient temperature. The temperature units in Fahrenheit or centigrade. Uh, measurement units, you have several options on that. You can do PPM, grams per brake horsepower hour, um, pounds per million BTUs. Then there's the oxygen reference. If you need that, you can go in and you can set that. I'll show you that in the menus. Uh, at this point, you're pretty much ready to go. What you'll do is take the unit out to your source, insert the probe in the stack, watch the readings, Wait till this stabilize. Once you're satisfied that you've got good readings, or you've got the readings where you expect them to be, or uh, you've made any changes to the instrument, you know, to the equipment, and you watch the display, 
and everything is where you want it to be, you have several options at this point. You can either print it, you hit the print button, and it prints out the top, gives you a hard copy, or you can hit the store button, it stores it internally. So once, you, once you've done that, hit enter, and it stored the data. Another option is you can set up a time storage, which you can access through the menus. Uh, you can also review, if you want, in the menus. You can review the stored data and, and erase or print out hard copies from the stored data. So those are the several options that you've got. At that point, you're finished now with your testing. You've got your data, either hard copy, a stored copy, whatever you need. And you just simply take the probe out of the stack. Keep in mind that the tip of that probe is going to be very hot. So don't put it on anything that you don't want to damage. Keep it away from plastic. Keep it away from your skin, your clothes, until it cools down. Let the unit run. Let it purge. You can put it back on uh, oxygen, and CO, or any of the readings, and just watch it and wait for it to come back close to ambient again. And at that point, you're done. You, you can turn the unit off, disconnect your hoses, and put everything away. And that's it. It's that simple.